Okay, so thank, thank you for doing that, for being open as well, and sharing what your strengths are and what some of the feedback you've had about your watch outs. Um, and you will be building on that when we come to do the uh, final exercise based on Room 101. So, the first thing to state is some stating techniques. I said we'll be focusing on using your extroverted energy and how you influence. So these are three techniques that I use on all my influencing programs and they're about helping people really land what they're trying to say and get people to buy in, in a very concise and a very structured way. So the first technique on the left is about sharing views and opinions and it's saying, I think, sharing your view, with a because and then having two or three concise backup reasons that back up your views. So, let's put a flavour of Room 101 on this. If I was trying to persuade you all to get rid of people that sneeze loudly without using tissues all the time, which would be one of my things I'd put in Room 101, to use that structure I could say something like, I think people who sneeze without blowing their noses need to be put in Room 101 because I think it's outrageously rude not be blowing your nose. I also think they're spreading germs and disease amongst the population. And thirdly, I just don't like seeing people sneezing with all that phlegm. Okay. <laughs> Firstly, secondly, thirdly, structured reasons why I would do that to back up my view. The next one is about expressing feelings, how you're feeling about something. And this is about using your emotional feeling about something as a, as a means to persuade other people. So. The technique is, I feel, and then you follow it with an emotion that you feel, and then you have a because with one backup reason, which positions why you feel that way. So, I could say in the context of Room 101, you know, I feel really irritated when people sneeze without blowing their nose. Okay? Because it's just inconsiderate to other people around them. And I use my emotional feeling about it as a persuader. What's interesting in the business world is people often see, out of those two, <coughs> I can understand why you share views, opinions, and have structure, because we do that a lot in the business. But where would you need to share feelings in this business, in the strong engineering-focused business? Well, an example in a business context would be, in a meeting, you're concerned that the deliverable is not going to be achieved, and you say, I'm really concerned, team, that we're not going to nail this, because of some of the delivery issues we've got and then you shut up. So what you put on the table is an emotional concern which gives some weight to it. I think the other thing that's interesting about feelings is people cannot debate with you how you feel. They can debate with you what you think. So again, it's that bit that Rory was saying about outcomes. What outcome do you want? How much do you need to persuade people to take something seriously? It can be really useful to use an expression of your feelings as well as an expression of your views or what you think needs to happen. The third one out of the techniques is about setting a clear store about what you want, what you need, and what you expect from other people or situations. And this is very simple. So it's, you know, I want, following what you want. I need, you follow with what you need. And I expect, and you follow with what you expect. The real influencing that's behind it, though, is if you point out to people the consequences of this thing being met, positive consequences, benefits if you like, or you also point out, or you choose to only point out, the negative consequences of it not being met. So let's take an example of Room 101 again, I'll pick up on my sneezing scenario. So I could say, I want everyone who sneezes without blowing their nose in public yeah, to be eradicated from this planet. Yeah. If we get rid of these people, I guarantee we will not be spreading germs, we will not be missing work, we will not absent from work, our companies will be far more profitable if we do not sit next to people that sneeze. Okay. That's my consequence, my powerful consequence, my influencing consequence as to why we need to hear them. So the reason I'm emphasising this is you are going to be you thinking of these techniques and how you use them in your influencing pitch to get your item, your thing that irritates the hell out of you, put into room 101. So in terms of how you express it, and you've been working on your words, your voice, and your body language, you're using extroverted energy. So this is all about being convincing and believable. So therefore, your words are, you own them. You know, I think this, or we think this, or we need this, or we feel this about it. It's well-structured. 
with backup reasons. You've only got two minutes, so you need to have as much influencing data in that two minutes as you can get. It's key messages and being concise and clear. Your voice has to have some energy to it. It's got to feel that you're enthusiastic, that you really do believe what you're saying, and that for you persuade through the use of your voice. You've got to be comfortable with pauses and silences, so I will be watching that when people do a two-minute influencing pitch, it's not a constant stream of words with no pausing. Okay? It's got to land so that you hear what people are saying, and there's some silence and pauses between the sentences, so it's not just one big rush of information. And the final bit is about your body language. Your face should look happy, confident, persuasive. You should use open gestures. And you'll be doing this from a seated position. So this is not about presenting. It's about influencing like Russell Howard was sat in a chair. You'll be doing a pitch sat in a chair. <coughs> so what have you got to do? You'll be doing an exercise in your team, your tables, where you can need to pick on one idea that somebody in your table's got for something to put into room 101, and you will be preparing a two-minute influencing pitch. Only one or two members of your team are involved in actually doing the pitch, so you can decide based on people's strengths and people's watch-outs who's going to be um, comfortable doing that. I don't want it to be any of your facilitators, because your facilitators are going to guide you through a structured process of what you need to do to do this exercise. So somebody who's not your facilitators will do it, but you can do it in twos. You will be judged on how well you use the three influencing techniques and how well you use your words and your body, voice and body language to convince. So the first step is to agree something you would put in room 101. I think some of you have already started those discussions going when we were doing the pizza. So what is the thing that you would put in room 101? Next step is to design and improve your influencing pitch. You've only got two minutes. So everybody around the flip chart, yeah. brainstorming, sharing ideas, what would you put on there? Step three, you rehearse your pitch and improve. So use somebody's mobile phone, video it, observe it, how can you make it better, do it again. And then the final thing is to do a final recording of it, and then that recording will be sent to Kathy, and then the judging will happen over Christmas, um, and there'll be prizes and the winner. So I think the best team will get a prize, there'll be some tasty little treat for the winning group. Okay, so you've got between now and 25 past one to do this. Over to you. I think we should